hello everyone welcome to this course so what are we going to discuss today and why three question marks over there okay the thing is we are just going to talk about the internet and the web services okay so this course belongs to the rest api implementation and how we are going to do that in uh, using python and let's start okay so what is this there are three images over there and this is what all about what is going on the internet in the left side i have something called postman and there is some other uh, up and down arrows and in the middle i have something called web server and the other side i have something like database it's not a something like database it's a database okay so this is what is happening in the internet someone is requesting something and the web server is accepting the request okay so the web server it accepting the request and it will transform into the appropriate language for example if you deploy uh, your code into your server it may be uh, java code or python code or any different kind of languages so based on the language it will receive a response and it will start doing your business logic business logic is nothing but taking your request and reading the data from the input and passing to the database and retrieving the information based on the input request so web service web servers that is taking the responsibility of receiving and sending the response back to the client so we need to have a client in the real time world we are clients and we are requesting something that is there in the any websites so we can call them as web servers so you are trying to do something and you are hitting a enter and the request passed to the server it will process your input maybe it will take the input from the database or it will take the input from somewhere else and it will construct the response and send back to us so basically it's a point to point contact i'm requesting something and i'm not sure what it is doing on the back end so at the end i'm getting the results so we are going to talk about what is going on behind the screens okay here we go here so what are the clients it may be a mobile or a computer or a tablet it can be any user interfaces i mean user clients you can use a physical desktop nowadays we have a lot of smart devices even you can use the ipad to trigger a request and you can log into some websites and you can hit a request so ultimately what will happen when you hit a enter the request will be constructed and it is sending to the web server so web server as i said earlier the code might be any language it may be a python or java or php or any different kind of programming language so it will read your input and it will start processing the data and reading the information from the input and passing to the different database because each each and every programming language is communicating to the different different servers i mean different different databases it may be my sql or uh, oracle or no database sql or postgresql it, it depends on your need okay so we have we have a different kind of clients also we have a different kinds of databases and also we have a different kind of programming languages where we can write our business logic so this basically this is a basic web service very basics okay but when you talk about web services there are one legend sitting over there who's nothing but soap so we all know what is soap and we we are getting used to it for such a long time so what it represents soap is nothing but it's a simple object access protocol and it's been used for such a long time so what are the advantages for the soap and let's let's talk about the rest bit later okay so what soap is offering to us since it's been using using a long time 
there are a lot of language pla language platform and the the independent of the transportation and also it's a distributed enterprise environment and very standard and we have a lot of pre-built extensibility and also built-in error handling so you don't have to write your own error handling logic to handle your request and responses so SOAP it has its own implementation for the error handling and of course automation so these are the main core functionality of SOAP and the advantages I can say so what REST is offering to us again REST is also doing a similar job then why do I need to go to from SOAP to REST simple things everything is simple in REST there is no expensive tools if you're going for a SOAP you need to have a SOAP UI to run your request or simulate your services in the case of REST you don't need any expensive tools you can use a lot of web clients and very small learning curve you don't have to spend much time to learning the REST functionality and it is also efficient because we are handling the data very smart way and it's also fast and it's similar to other web technologies and one important thing is transforming the response in the case of SOAP what you will get you will get the data in a XML format in case based on the client needs in case if you want to convert your response into some different kind of format maybe JSON or text or based on the user need those things you need to handle it manually once you got the response you need to write your own programming logic to convert those XML into a different kind of format but in the case of REST everything is inbuilt if you're getting in a XML format you can simply for converting it to JSON you don't have to write your own logic because we have predefined functionalities for that okay and this is pretty much is comparison between the rest and the soap so what are we going to learn in this course let's talk about rest rest means it's a representational state transfer we have a client and we have a server so we are communicating through request and response and you know what is API? API is a, a programming interface so it's it's kind it's, in, it's interacting between different kind of applications so it's called as an API and we can simply say application programming interfaces okay and it's basically architecture based so each and everything construct in a proper way and whatever you are creating into the web service we can call them as a resource if you have one functionality it will get the information from the user and stored in the database that is a resource and you are entering your username and password and that is one method one API is working validating the username and password and send back the response that is another resource similarly everything is considering as a resources as I said earlier very lightweight and scalable and easy to maintain it is fast because there is no strict rule like soap because soap you need to have a lot of no rules you need to have a proper schema you need to have a proper exist everything and restful can be written in any programming language and executed in any kind of platforms and basically restful web services can use soap web services as implementation that is also possible you can you can you can incorporate with the soap web services as well and as I said earlier what is the advantage when you are going to use REST services converting the data format into a different kind of data format so you can convert them into plain text or HTML XML or JSON or whatever the type which user is requesting and you don't need much bandwidth it will work with it will work in very less bandwidth of course REST is most preferred then so nowadays in the market 70 or 75 percentage of services working based on the REST API implementation so what is the plan here so what are we going to do so in this exercise what we are going to do is I'm going to have a student DB it's not a exact DB I'm going to have a hard-coded repository like I have a collection which holds the student information 
so we are considering them as a student information which is coming from the database okay so what we are going to do is we are go going to do the crud operation with those data how inserting a new student or updating existing student informations or deleting the existing student informations so that is what we are going to implement in this particular uh, entire course and basically uh, the another thing this is not very complicated or very deep dive into the rest implementation this is very simple and it's totally for beginners okay so the first thing always set up your environment the thing is how are we going to implement the first thing environment and the second thing which framework we are going to use there are a lot of frameworks available to implementing the python web services the top most two is dijango and the flask so these are the two major things from our for our course what we are going to do is we are preferring the flask framework since it's very small and easy to learn Dijon going to have a, the big implementations and you have to do a lot of back end work. So we are going to implement our functionality with the help of Flask, Flask framework. Okay, so how we are going to install Flask framework? If you install Python in your machine, you don't have to do much things. Just go to your command prompt and execute pip install and Flask. So it will download the dependencies from the internet and it will be available in your local machine. Okay. And what is the next thing? When you are working with a web services, what is the first need? The web server. That is the most important thing. You need to create a web server which can handle the request and response. That is the important thing. So how are we going to do that? This is just implementation and when you are writing your own program, we will let you know why it is, how it is used. App is equal to Flask. Flask is key. We are importing from Flask and what it is belongs to. Everything when you are trying to write a code, we can easily understand. So you, you can have a variable which holds the server or creating a simulating the server and you can run the applications. The name is it's, it's user defined. You can give any name, whatever you want. So, what are the things available in the REST? The major four methods. Get and put and post and delete. So, get ultimately fetching the data from the database or fetching the data. Put method, updating existing data. If you have some existing student information, if you are trying to update something, you need to go for put method. And post, adding in new details. For example, in our case, adding a new student information and delete records. Of course, I want to delete a particular student name, student details. You can use the delete method. So, this is a dictionary which we are going to use in this particular course. Student DB. In the student DB, I have a role number name section. So, I'm going to add a new student here and update the existing student and delete a student and fetch specific information. So this is, we can call this an offline repository or offline database. So thank you again to choosing this course. And uh, we are going to deep dive into the very basics of RESTful web service implementation using Python. And let's meet each other in the next video. Thank you.